right, so today we are going to be talking all about how to approach working with and photographing blind and deaf dogs. Now, before I get started, though, I just have to say, if you haven't had the extraordinary pleasure to photograph a dog who is limited in sight or hearing, they are some of the silliest, most joyful pups I've encountered, and it is truly an honor to work with them. Now, in my experience, most blind and deaf dogs rely heavily on their nose to understand and perceive the world around them. However, I have worked with some blind and or deaf dogs that do have one sense that's completely non-existent while maintaining another sense on sort of a limited basis. So that could look like a dog being completely deaf but having say partial eyesight in one or both eyes, similar to like a senior dog, or they could have no eyesight but have partial or very limited hearing. And that could be something like a dog who has come from a breeder that has genetic defects. And that's really what I want you guys to pay attention to when you're working with or photographing a blind and or deaf dog. The levels at which they are limited and what senses they do still maintain. Obviously, if they're fully blind or deaf, you know that you have to take advantage of the senses they do have which are touch, smell, and the use of their mouth or taste. If the dog has lost all sight and hearing, I recommend using the stinkiest, smelliest treats possible and really taking that treat and luring it in front, in front of their nose to get them to look up at you or in your general direction. Because they really have to use their nose to make sense of the world around them, you will regularly see a fully blind and deaf dog pick up their nose in the air and kind of look one way or another as their sniffer is being put to work. Personally, I do love a profile shot when they do that, but to get them to look forward, definitely use a tree in front of the nose and lure it away from them. And you will likely have to do this over and over again during a session to get the final result that you want. Now, when you're luring them with that treat, they may also move towards you because they're like, oh, treat when you do that, but you can actually also take advantage of that motion for some walking or movement shots for a little variety. And another thing that I love to do when working with blind and deaf dogs is incorporate play by giving them a toy or two so they can mouth on something and that really provides sensory enjoyment for them and an opportunity for them to do something different for the, through the session. When that happens, I will simply photograph them as they're behaving, allowing them to do what they wanna do, which can make for a lot of very silly and cute shots. Now, a tennis boy is always a good option, but I have found a squeaky toy that has a lot of different textures is even better. Lastly, for blind or deaf dogs, take advantage of their person, so that could be the pet parent, the handler, volunteer. It's likely that the dog's gonna wanna stay very close to whomever they are bonded with because some of these dogs I've found really just like to be able to feel that nearness of their person near them to know where they are at all times. And of course the dog can obviously smell where they are too. So you can utilize the handler by having them move away from the dog for some motion or action shots as the dog's obviously gonna follow. Another thing you can do if the dog is trained with touch signals is have the handler tell them specific commands like sit or down with the touch of a hand or finger. Now that will help to give more variety throughout the session too. Even if the dog isn't specifically trained with those touches, most pet parents have their own language with their dog and how to get them to perform specific tasks like sit or stay. Now I do recommend also incorporating the handler or pet parent for cuddling shots and intimate loving shots as these dogs are usually very closely bonded with their people and those are just always super sweet photos to capture anyway. Now if the dog does have limited sight, you can still take advantage of toys to get their attention or make their or ask their person if they can make funny faces and silly movements to keep that dog really intrigued during the session. Conversely, if the dog is blind but can still hear, like I mentioned earlier, then scent, scent work and noises are going to be your best bet to engage with them. Now, the more that you photograph blind and deaf dogs, the more you will start to understand how they kind of interact with the world around them. And you can then pull out some of these things that I've shared with you in this video to help receive the best result and cutest photos from your time together. Now, I would love to hear which piece of your advice from this video was your favorite or what have been your personal experiences photographing blind or deaf pups. I would love to know in the comments below. As always, until our next video together, friends, be kind and rescue dogs. Thanks for watching.